Gergi Castrioti, also known as Skanderbeg. He was born in 1405 in the village of Sine, Albania, as the youngest of nine siblings. His father was John Castrioti, who was lord in Albanian lands. Among the regions he dominated were such regions as Kruje, Mati, Mirdite, and Dibba. In 1421, when John Castriote and his army kept Kruja under his control, he was defeated in the war with the Ottomans and accepted Ottoman rule. He gave his son Jerji to Murad II as a hostage to show his loyalty to the Ottoman Empire. Skanderbeg was just an 18-year-old boy when he entered the Ottoman palace. While he was receiving royal Ottoman education, he became a Muslim and changed his name from Georgi Kastriotti to Iskander. Skanderbeg, who was educated in the Ottoman palace until 1431, learned the art of war well and started to participate in the wars in the Ottoman army as Sipahi. When the Albanian nobles revolted against the Ottoman Empire in 1432 and 1436, Skanderbeg remained loyal to Sultan Murad II and didn't participate in the uprisings. Standing out with his combat skills for six years, Skanderbeg gained the trust of the Ottomans and was promoted to the rank of Subashe in 1437. Thanks to his success in politics, he rose rapidly and became the Ottoman governor of Tiba. By 1443, the Crusader troops rounded the city of Nish, which was under Ottoman control. When the siege was successful, Murad II dispatched his armies in Rumelia to Nish in order to take back the castle of Nish. The Ottomans advanced to Nish with three different armies. One of the armies mobilized against the Crusaders was the Albanian troops under the control of Skanderbeg. These three Ottoman armies that encountered the Crusaders were defeated by them. Seeing that the Ottomans were defeated, Skanderbeg gathered his army and marched to Kruje. Entering the castle with a forged letter, which he presented as a sultan's edict, Skanderbeg captured the castle and started a rebellion movement against the Ottomans. With the rebellion of Skanderbeg and the capture of the city of Kruje, many regions in Albania left the Ottoman rule and came under the control of Skanderbeg. Skanderbeg declared that he had rejected Islam and had revolted to avenge the deaths of his family and country. He chose the red flag with a double-headed eagle as the symbol of the uprising which inspired the flag of modern Albania. Sultan Murad II sent an Ottoman army under the command of Ali Pasha to put down the rebellion of Skanderbeg. The two armies came face to face on the plain of Torviol. Skanderbeg had 15,000 soldiers under his command. He had placed 5,000 soldiers at the bottom of a hill and the other 10,000 soldiers were hidden in the forest. Ali Pasha, who came to the plain, saw 5,000 rebels positioned at the bottom of the hill and attacked towards the hill with his army in order to end the war quickly. The Albanian army fought for a very short time and then started to retreat to the hill. The Ottoman army was also fighting with them on the hills. Meanwhile, Skanderbeg ordered his army, which was hiding, to attack.
10,000 Albanian soldiers came out of the forests and quickly attacked and cornered the Ottoman army at the top of the hill. The cornered Ottoman army suffered many casualties and was defeated. Realizing the seriousness of the situation, Murat II sent an army against Gandabek again one year later in 1445. In this battle, called the Battle of Mokra, the victorious side was once again Skanderbeg. In 1446, another Ottoman army was sent against Skanderbeg. But he was victorious in this battle as well. Thereupon, Murat II ordered his pashas to defend the borders against attacks by Skanderbeg. Meanwhile, Skanderbeg attacked the Venetian settlements along the Albanian coastline in order to take the fortress of Dagnum. In response, the Venetian Republic sent a local force to protect the castle of Dagnum and asked for Ottoman help against Skanderbeg. After meeting the Venetian army in Skoda, Skanderbeg defeated them. Three weeks later, he defeated the Ottoman army at the Battle of Oranik in 1448 and consolidated his rule in Albania. In the same year, Murat II gathered a large army of 100,000 men and besieged the Kojaji castle with his son Muhammad II. Although Skanderbeg tried to prevent the fall of the castle, he wasn't successful. When the castle was captured by the Ottomans, Murat II, together with his son Muhammad II, besieged Kruja, the capital of Skanderbeg, with a larger army. Skanderbeg left the castle with his cavalry and first attacked the Venetians, who provided food to the Ottoman Empire. He then attacked the Ottoman supply troops and tried to deprive the Ottomans of supplies. As a result of the successful defense of the Albanians, the Ottoman army was repulsed by the fortress and the Ottomans suffered great losses. Being unable to provide food from the Venetians, Murat II decided to end the siege in October. When Murat II died a few months later due to illness, his son Sultan Muhammad the Conqueror succeeded him on the throne. Although Skanderbeg had repelled successive Ottoman attacks, Albania was worn out and its economy had collapsed. During the following years, Albania remained calm. The new Ottoman Sultan, Muhammad the Conqueror, was busy conquering the Roman Empire. Finally, after the conquest of Constantinople, the Albanians began to receive financial aid from the King of Naples, Venice, the Papacy and Hungary. In 1455, Skanderbeg, strengthened with the help he received from Europe and reinforced his army, besieged the Ottoman fortress of Berat. However, the cavalry under the command of Hisak Pasha broke through the besiegers and destroyed them all.
July 1456, Muhammad the Conqueror laid siege to Belgrade with a large army. However, when Yana Shunyadi came to Belgrade with his army, the Sultan was defeated and ended the siege. Hamza Kastriyoti, Skanderbeg's nephew and one of his most important officers, changed sides and joined the Ottomans. Hamza Kastriyoti, who knew Skanderbeg's tactics and war strategies very well, proposed to Muhammad the Conqueror to take the whole of Albania in a great conquest movement. In May 1457, a large Ottoman army approached Albania. Skanderbeg refrained from fighting the approaching Ottoman army alone. Muhammad the Conqueror placed Isaac Pasha and Hamza Kastrioti in command of the army. Isaac Bey was an experienced commander, having suppressed John Kastrioti's rebellion in 1430 and led the successful counter-attack at Berat. Hamza had brought several opposing Albanian commanders with him and had personal knowledge of the tactics they expected from Skanderbeg. The Ottoman army totaled between 50,000 and 80,000 men. Armies of this size were usually led by the Sultan, but this wasn't the case this time. In contrast, Skanderbeg's army was between 8,000 and 10,000. Albania couldn't resist against this army. Isaac Bey and Hamza knew the Albanian terrain and tactics well. Usually, Skanderbeg would throw a decoy to lure the enemy and win the battle by ambush. But this time, he chose a new way to fight. In order to make it impossible to be pursued by the enemy, Skanderbeg divided his army into several groups and ordered his commanders to march with the soldiers through the forests and mountains, not to engage the Ottoman army in any way unless instructed to do so and not to unite the groups. Since Isaac Bey was unable to inflict a decisive defeat on Skanderbeg, he decided not to besiege the main Albanian stronghold of Kruje until Skanderbeg's army was completely defeated. The Ottoman army camped north of Mount Tumenishta and waited for Skanderbeg to appear. Seizing the right moment, Skanderbeg signaled to his army, which, in separate groups, united and marched towards the Ottoman camps without being seen by the Ottomans. Skanderbeg climbed to a high point with his most trusted men and saw that the Ottoman soldiers were resting. He ordered his army to attack piece by piece. The Ottoman soldiers were caught unprepared. Hamza Kastriyoti tried to organize the troops, reassuring the army that the Albanians were outnumbered. Just then, Albanian war trumpets were heard. The hidden Albanians attacked the Ottomans from the other side of the camp. While the Ottoman army was still in the days of the first attack, they were frightened to see another Albanian army coming from behind and split in two to fight. Then another Albanian war horn was heard and the third Albanian troops who had been hiding came out. Seeing that they were surrounded, the Ottoman army panicked and began to become less. The losses of the Ottoman army were around 30,000. 
more than 50,000 Ottoman soldiers were murdered. Along with 24 banners, the Ottoman treasury in the camp was captured by the Albanians. Many Ottoman soldiers were captured. Among the captives was Hamza Kastrioti, Skanderbeg's nephew. This victory was the biggest victory of Skanderbeg against the Ottomans so far. Until 1462, Skanderbeg repelled the Ottoman army every year, but the following year, the Ottoman army attacked again with the same force. Crusader states, on the other hand, supported Skanderbeg with all their means, because the defense of Albania prevented the Ottoman expansion and the conquest movements to Italy and Western Europe. In 1463, Mohammed the Conqueror prepared three separate armies and sent them to Albania. When Skanderbeg learned that three Ottoman armies were coming against him, he gathered his army and set off. He defeated the first army under the command of Sinan Pasha in Mokra, the second army under the command of Hussein Bey in Ohrid and the third army near Skopje. Since Skanderbeg's country had a difficult geography with steep mountains and narrow gorges, he was able to successfully defend his country with a small force. However, the Sultan continued to send armies to Albania every year, implementing a policy of intimidation. As a result of the Ottoman attacks renewed every year, Albanians suffered great losses. The economy of the country was in a state of collapse. Sultan Muhammad the Conqueror sent a stronger army under the command of Balaban Pasha against Skanderbeg again in 1465. Skanderbeg was also victorious in this battle, but the retreating Ottoman troops captured 19 noble officers of Skanderbeg and brought them to Istanbul. These captives were a great blow to Skanderbeg. When he asked the Sultan to ransom these captives, Muhammad the Conqueror rejected this offer and executed all the captives. In the same year, Mehmed the Conqueror sent two more Ottoman armies against Skanderbeg. Skanderbeg defeated both of these armies and executed all the Ottoman soldiers he captured in retaliation against the Sultan. Consequently, Muhammad the Conqueror prepared an Ottoman army of 30,000 men the following year in 1466 and personally led the army. He besieged the city of Kruje, which he couldn't capture with his father 16 years ago. Skanderbeg had left the castle again and went to ask for help from the Crusader states. After months of hard siege, Sultan Muhammad left the siege to Balaban Pasha and withdrew himself. Skanderbeg returned with the help he received, defeated Balaban Pasha and murdered him and managed to break the siege of the city. The following year, Sultan Muhammad the Conqueror came back with a larger army. He conquered the castles around Kruje and left garrisons all over Albania.
He had placed troops in the other fortresses he had conquered and had pinned Skander back. The situation for Skander back was getting tighter and tighter. In 1468, Skanderbeg suddenly contracted malaria and died in January 1468. It is rumored that when the death of Skanderbeg was reported to Muhammad the Conqueror, the Sultan said, Woe to Christianity, they have lost their swords and shields. Skanderbeg's son John Castriotti II tried to defend Albania, but he wasn't very successful. The Albanian armies, which resisted for a few more years, couldn't withstand the Ottoman attacks and had to surrender the city in the last siege of Kruja. After the reconquest of the city of Kruja, the whole of Albania was once again under Ottoman rule.